все это типа бомбежки, вся эта война, она уже, если честно, очень в печенках сидит. This is Donetsk Republic. This is very, very cool and very, very crazy. Кто ебанулся? Все ебанули! This is Kima, probably the most notorious and most famous of all the new generation of Kiev club nights. You know, there's a lot of very cool, very stylish kids here. You can hear the techno. I can feel it in my bones already. Schema was a high intensity, high fashion, and simply just very high party, full of razor cut kids who could have come straight out of an East Berlin catwalk show. But I was here because Ukraine is in a unique political situation right now, as it's currently the only country in Europe with a war on its own soil. I knew most of the people here would have felt the shockwaves of this conflict in some way or another, and I wondered how it affected them. Music, music, but away from Kiev near the border with Russia, a new Putin-backed rebel state called the Donetsk People's Republic, or the DNR, has formed, which is still at war with Ukraine. Конечно, у нас много ребят, которые там оттуда именно поприезжали. Просто жестко, типа, все. Там нету власти вообще абсолютно. То есть там много оружия и... Я думаю, что в ДНР, честно, даже не представляю как. И я даже не думаю про тусовки там, потому что с тем, что сейчас происходит, тусовки такие могут накрыться очень, очень серьезно, и, ну, и будут большие последствия. Judging by the haircuts and dilated pupils on display, the kids here were evidently reveling in their new democratic liberties. But there was obviously a huge part of this country that was still living through wartime and shut out of the party. It was clear that to really understand the state of things, I was going to have to go behind military lines and into Donetsk, which wasn't going to be easy. Welcome to Dnipro. We are here because you can no longer go to Donetsk directly because the airport was bombed. Uh, pretty apprehensive about our trip because Donetsk is still a war zone, which is why I've got this uh, ridiculous bag. And in it, we've got the staple of any war journal wardrobe, some body armor in classic, don't shoot me, I've got a deadline blue, uh, some tourniquets and a gas mask. So it's been quite an ominous preparation for this. And that kind of feeling kind of pretty much feeds into it as soon as you start doing the research, actually. There's a handy little website called liveuamap.com. On this website, there's a legend which sorts out sort of various troubles that are going on here through these kind of like war emojis. There's a little white flag for people who have been captured, landmines, IEDs. But probably the most ominous of all of them is the emoji, which is simply a sad face with two X's for eyes. And that just means dead, apparently. By the looks of things, Three people have died today, about a couple of kilometers from where we're staying. Which begs the question, why are we going? Interestingly, Donetsk, for all its problems, is still a working city. It also has nightclubs, and I think we just want to find out what it's like to go clubbing in a war zone. The extreme and unpredictable nature of the situation begged the question, why in God's name were they letting us in? Why would one of the most secretive states on earth 
with an operational curfew for all citizens, let a British crew making a film about nightlife in. And more importantly, why do we want to go? To get there, we would have to cross through several checkpoints and armed borders on both the Ukrainian and separatist sides, coming within kilometers of the front line. That's uh, gunfire. Yeah, it's like a sort of crackling sound in the distance. So we're finally in Donetsk, on our way from Dnipro. It's taken about five hours, I'd say about an hour and a half of that was probably spent in the checkpoints, in the queue. In the distance, you did get um, little puffs of smoke, which apparently are from RPGs. The rebel vices of this self-declared state have fought a bloody two-year war for their independence from Ukraine. Nearly 10,000 people have died during the battle to form the DNR, and in recent months, there's been a rise in the violence. So I wasn't exactly sure what I was in for. Driving around, it seemed that the state's presence was inescapable. The bus stops and billboards that once would have advertised international brands now sold the dream of the DNR in crudely realised propaganda. The cliches are all there. I mean, it's guys with their chins held up like this, fists in the air and sort of very proud working women and children who have a kind of, um, I don't know, I guess a, a wistful vision of the future of the rule here. You've even got a very thoroughbred looking blonde boy holding a dove in the air and releasing it towards a better future. It's, um, it's absolutely classic propaganda. I think there seems to be a sense of um, trying to return to a bygone era and you, you just feel that driving around here. I'd heard every civilian in the DNR was subject to a state-enforced night curfew between the hours of 11pm and 5am. And I wanted to know more about how that affected the nightlife here. So, I needed to go where the kids were hanging out. Chicago, a bomb shelter turned dive bar, at least used to play host to the city's alternative community. And on arrival, it turned out that was still the case. Tonight, they were having some kind of tattoo party, and it seemed like a decent place to start. If it was in London, this is the sort of place I always end up at about 3am because these places go long and go hard, but with the curfew, I imagine it's a little bit different. Chicago looked like a bar out of an 80s movie, one with a Terminator or at least Crocodile Dundee might humiliate some bikers. And a band who could best be described as an Eastern Bloc Evanescence were holding court in room one. disparate crew of subcultures had descended upon the event. In most other cities, they would probably all go to different bars, but with so many young people fleeing Donetsk, Chicago had an air of the last chance saloon to it. Next door in room two, I'd noticed a young man who'd attracted a crowd, desperately trying to style out the pain of having hot ink etched into your skin. I believe he's getting a spider's web tattoo done. Looks um, quite painful. How is it being young during the conflict and what's going on here? <laughs> it was my first night in Donetsk, and I wanted to know what happens when the curfew kicks in. I'd seen on social media that one of the biggest young collectives in the city was a group of BMXers who call themselves the Pills Crew, and I went to go and meet them at a city skate park not long before lights out. что там в Донецке, вот, они, ну как бы один движ на Нрай, вот, а там уже свисиноваты, там с каких-нибудь отдаленных там областей, это уже да, ну не проблема доехать сюда, чтобы покататься, потому что комендантский час, так бы и ночь, ну что да. Is there less people in the park? Yes, yeah, a lot less people in the park, like four times less than before. There is a lot of militaries going out. Soldiers can come to you and take you somewhere. Nobody knows where. There is parties, there is nightlife, but only in the home. Does it upset you that, you know, everyone has to go home at 11 and there's soldiers on the streets? 
конечно, расстраивает, потому что мы привыкли всегда, молодежь, особенно летом, когда жарко, мы гуляем в основном ночью. And tell me about one of these flat parties. Everyone's talking about them. What kind of thing goes down? Вы пока здесь худшего здесь побывать на них. At 10.45 p.m., the old factory bells now used to sound the curfew started to ring out across the city. The Pills crew seemed well rehearsed in the drill and had started to disperse even before the first bell had rung. We soon found ourselves alone in the deserted park. Well, it's caught to 11 now and everyone's cleared out the skate park. There seemed to be a genuine sort of slight intimidation in their eyes. I thought there might be a bit more sort of bravado about the curfew and they're like, you know, fuck you, we're not going to bed, etc. And maybe like a cat and mouse game with the police, like you expect from teenagers around the world when it comes to going home. But there was none of that here. They looked genuinely frightened about the prospect of staying out too long. And that's it. The lights just turned off like that. It's really, really surreal, really quite sinister. Um, adding to that is the problem that we can't find our car right now. Uh, I think we'd be okay because we've got accreditation, but our accreditation's in the car. So uh, I'm going to end up in the gulag tonight if I'm not careful. <laughs> city plunged into darkness and not another civilian on the streets, the dangers of the curfew suddenly felt much more real. The penalty of being caught out on the streets after 11 is up to 15 days in prison. How could any kind of nightlife thrive in such a situation? Well, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And they don't get much tougher than the soldiers of the DNR. We were in Donetsk, aka the People's Republic of Donetsk, in the Donbass region, formerly Ukraine's second city and now a heavily armed pro-Russian separatist state. But despite the 11pm curfew for all civilians, we were here to find where the party was at. We'd heard that the hottest club in town was called SNS, which found a way around the curfew by checking punters into the adjacent hotel. The only problem was, nobody could leave until the band of movement ended, six hours later. Outside in the smoking area, I met a soldier and we quickly got talking. Let's not beat about the bush. You were in the camo because the girls love it, right? What music do soldiers like to listen to on the front line? Можно сказать, я могу и метал послушать, блин, и Джаз послушать, блин, и медленную музыку, сакс, блин. Ну, естественно, ближе всего мне это национальная музыка, моя родная, блин, и лезгинка, блин, и все положено. And with that, it was time for my first ever лезгинка dance lesson, thanks to a Dagestani commander. The club was at least three quarters empty with only a few crews of rebel soldiers horsing about like they were on a Stalinist stag do. The routine itself looked a little bit more river dance than Red Army, but it was a strangely powerful feeling being told to loosen my wrists and arch my back by a man who spent his weekdays dodging heavy artillery fire. This man may well have taken lives, but for tonight, he was letting me take the lead. I heard the people with the power were sitting out back in the VIP area, and after a while I was invited to sit down with a guy called Yanis Pukkonen, who works for the DNR's Ministry of Information. This is the frontier of World Revolution. Donbass is the frontier of the World Revolution. The public revolution, the people's revolution. What was it about this conflict that really kind of brought you to want to be integral to the whole thing? Because my Russian brothers are suffering. Mm -hmm. Do we need a bigger reason? Mm -hmm. 
the fate of humanity is uh, at stake here. I would hate the humanity in which uh, London and Washington have the last say. Right. <laughs> you know, we are now shelled when we are sitting here, just a few kilometers away, shells are landing, guys are in the position, shooting Kalashnikovs, putting mortars, new rounds inside, they are taking mm -hmm. incoming fire. We can go just, right just, now if you just want. ten kilometers away. Nine, seven kilometers. From it seems there. quite surreal. We're in a VIP yeah, area of a club. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where... Yeah, but 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 this this Novorossian identity, which is protected and growing here, it's something what will spread, and and hopefully it will show uh, example by creating more People's Republic. Also to the west, there should be People's Republic of Norway, People's Republic of Finland, People's Republic of Sweden. People's Republic of Germany, Britain, give the possibility for the people to challenge the forces which are occupying them in their own soil, with their own homes, protecting their own homes, you know? And that's what is happening. I think you just reinvented Marxism. <laughs> <laughs> I think, that, that, would be my, that would be my answer. That's it. Toast for that. I can't drink, so I can't toast for that. <laughs> I was getting more of an idea of Yanis's politics of each vodka toast. He was a believer in Mother Russia and the old Eastern Bloc. He had disdain for Europe and NATO, but was keen to distance himself and the DNR from Putin's regime over the border. As the hours passed, I could see that the emerald-coloured booze, military bravado and post-Soviet propaganda wasn't going to end well. It had all gotten very weird. Not that I had much of a say in the matter. So it's 3am, the curfew started at 11, but where's the world is the way, and this is the way. Uh, I believe the only way we can really get out of this situation is to stay here till five, which I'm more not for. Uh, I believe these guys are bankrolling the whole situation. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm all right with it. Last night was probably, hands down, the strangest night of my life. I feel absolutely dreadful. My brain just feels like mushy peas or something. Really, really horrible. It's a really heavy vodka hangover. It's quite sad, really, the whole thing. It's a really weird, depressing Russian version of Top Gun. I don't remember a lot, to be honest. A nightmare hangover was about to get a nightmare cure as our new drinking buddy Yanis had offered to take us on an official tour of the DNR's front line. Waiting to meet him, we couldn't help but wonder why the DNR publicity team were rolling out the red carpet for us, despite banning almost all other media. Did Yanis see a crew making a film about nightlife as a bit of harmless publicity, or were we the unwitting tools of the Russian propaganda machine? Yanis. Yeah, hello. How are you? Yeah, good, good, good. So um, what are the day-to-day -day responsibilities of your job? to defend the truth, to show you the truth, to open the People's Republic for the people to understand. Uh, West is afraid of this place. You know why? Here is no corporations, here are no banks. This is a functional state, and they want to show that this is an oppressed people under some military gangs or something grim, very grim. But uh, the truth is something what they cannot handle, and that's why they don't want to tell about it. So people here think the violence is worth it? Oh, absolutely. You know, this, this front line is making heroes. Do you think like wearing a bulletproof vest in this kind of area is a bit unnecessary? No. No? No. <laughs> Ukrainian snipers love uh, <laughs> journalists. <laughs> Yanis was taking us to the former Donetsk International Airport. The scene is some of the bloodiest fighting in the region and still an ongoing hotspot for the violence. Quite how I'd ended up on the front line of the only war in Europe, I wasn't sure. Dressing up like an evil cop from a Banksy painting didn't make me feel any safer. We are just a few hundred meters from our front line now. A few hundred meters? Yeah. When you come to the front line areas, you start to see it like this. And the direction is always from the west. This has come uh, from the Ukrainian mortars. And the sharp nails, these killing bastards are like this. Here is some of them. They stuff them full of 
just bits of metal and that. To, yeah. Um, yeah. Maximum. Yeah. 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 Any moment we it can start. They're still firing shells here as we speak. There is no truth. There has never been, and uh, the war continues. The situation now is quite tense. Uh, there has become more and more uh, tactical attacks. This is very much now like uh, uh, aggressive phase again. But uh, of course, uh, our guys are firing back or then then shooting for the movement. Sorry to interrupt. Um, we need to actually get moving because. The shelling's getting closer, apparently. We will see if the situation starts to escalate and then, then we pull out. This airport was built just a few years ago for 2012 football matches. It was very beautiful and now it's totally devastated. Everything is like destroyed. And what about younger people? Because we'd heard reports that a lot of young people had fled for other cities or Kiev, maybe. They feel that living out the kind of best years of their lives under a war zone isn't the right thing to do for them. Of course, war is a hell, and war affects us all. And that's why we have to do everything what we can to stop the war, so that the, the, the future of the Donbas people will be saved. Of course, the leadership of the Donbas feel sorry about the young people, but we are on the same boat. <laughs> yeah. We have to leave. It's, it escalates usually like this, one, two, three, and then starts a pinpoint fire. That was quite a long way out of my usual comprehension, I suppose. Um, it's not the kind of place I ever really thought I'd end up coming to. And especially, you know, added to the surreal element of it is the just like artillery fire going off in the background every couple of seconds. And just the reactions of the people around us, just to sort of like, yeah, that was a mortar. Like, it was like, you know, listening to bird song or something like that. It's, you know, it's kind of quite indicative of the kind of everyday nature of how it is for people here. It's just a place of total destruction. Everything on this road is just bombed out. I was now pretty sure that I was in a war zone after all. The city was safe, but the horror was just around the corner with the suburbs being shelled every day. But surely the fighters facing this need some respite. Asking around, I heard rumours of a foam party happening in a beach resort near the front line. Naturally, I had to check it out. Everyone needs a holiday, especially when you live in an active war zone. The beach resort of Sedova is sandwiched between Crimea and the Russian border and just 15 kilometers away from the front line. A few of the seaside resorts in what used to be eastern Ukraine have been decimated by war. But Sedova, generally known as the down market one, has actually started to thrive under the regime. It had become the place to go, not only for the citizens of the People's Republic, but also a place of much welcome R&R &R for soldiers and their families. So we've arrived in Sedova. First impressions, I would say that it's definitely more Blackpool than Miami. Uh, it's a little bit Magaluf, lots of sort of it's generational crews walking around, sort of oldies and youngsters together. Yeah, it feels like we're quite through the looking glass, to be honest. So, um, what brings you girls to Sidova? Of course, we wanted to relax. And how's the mood amongst people here? Because, you know, it's not quite the heart of the conflict, but it's still going on, not too far from here. Are people still scared, or is it just kind of part of normality now? What about the nightlife in the area? What are the best bars in the area? Where should we be checking out tonight? Miami. Yeah. Очень даже круто, когда ты стоишь, на тебя дым и сверху падает пена, это классно. Лучше, чем просидеть дома. Ну, конечно, просто просто надоедает. Вот год мы уже сидим и дома это одна обстановка, но это немножко угнетает. 
So here we were, Miami Club. It was time to hit the dance floor to party to the break of 10 p.m. The club was packed with young ravers, pumping their fists to Russian deep house, frolicking in the rolling foam. It was the Ibiza experience, sent to the Kremlin and stamp for approval, state-sanctioned clubbing. Eventually the girls from the beach turned up and I went to go and find out how their night was going. How do you feel about all the soldiers walking around? Because there's loads of guys with guns and camo. Does that scare you? На самом деле нет, потому что мне кажется, они наоборот нас защищают и правда. Да, но вообще не страшно. Мы знаем очень много хороших людей, которые там воюют, поэтому мы в безопасности, я считаю. What's it like being young and living in the DNR? Если бы мне здесь не нравилось, я бы здесь не жила во всяком случае. У меня есть выбор. I guess we better get back inside. Хорошо. Мы пойдем и потанцуем. But just as everyone was loosening up, the music stopped. It was 10 p.m., giving the party goers an hour to get back to their chalets before the curfew began. Resistance seemed futile, even for drunk teenagers. Ну конечно плохо, хотелось бы погулять подольше и ну не знаю, честно говоря, хотелось бы больше времени, чтобы отдохнуть, оторваться по полной программе. Но, к сожалению, вот так. Но тем не менее, чему что есть, то есть. But one young man wasn't letting a small thing like a military enforced curfew kill his vibe. Jaguar, it's an yeah. awesome drink of Donetsk from Taska district. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, Jaguar. Yes, come on. It's so good. <laughs> yes. No, it's just an energy, energy drink. We like British, we like Oxymiron, it's for you. Oxymiron disaster vessel battle! Come on! <laughs> I think you might have had a few too many of them. They must drink and dance and... Uh, oh, oh! British! I love you! Me the best in the world! Well, I've been to some weird parties in my time, but a phone party in a war zone is definitely up there. It's not really the kind of thing that gets covered, is it? Here you are, not a million miles away from the front line, and you've got a load of kids dancing to EDM and getting covered in foam. It just shows the importance that coming out to party has in people's lives, and Sid Over is kind of a real testament to that. Bye. And who's the now? So how was your night? I was tired. I was how is it going home now after a curfew? Вы знаете, мы местные привыкли уже только до 11, мы гуляем только до 11, а даже когда нас тут очень не хватает просто. Мы же привыкли. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ukraine. As curfew approached, the DNR seemed to become a different world. The families and youngsters are scurried off home, 
and fights started to break out between groups of lads who packed too much drinking in before the 11pm bells rang. As we travelled through the empty highways towards Donetsk, we were forced to pull over as a massive convoy went past, transporting artillery guns to the front line. We arrived back in the city to find curfew cops, patrolling the streets, looking for drunks and potential plotters. It was a night patrol in a ghost town. The kids from the skate park had got in touch to invite us to a house party they were throwing in an attempt to circumvent the curfew rules. I bought a party pack of Russian lager and rocked up. So the kids have rented this place, kind of fetching sort of log cabin scenario going on here. Seems an unlikely place for a teenage house party. It also seems weirdly perfect for it as well. I mean, it's all very clever because I guess in a war zone, one of the only, only good things that come of it is that prices will drop for everything. Thus, it means that a bunch of teenagers can rent a two-story house on a Wednesday night and uh, throw a birthday party. So, um, <laughs> I guess what you're seeing in action is a kind of like youthful ingenuity, you know. We all grew up like, you know, getting one over on the rosers up the road and, you know, convincing the local shopkeeper that we were 18 and stuff like that. But this is that on a really, really grand scale. This is managing to throw a party outside of the realm of the military police. And let's just hope the cops don't turn up because I don't think anyone here is planning on going home tonight. And I think they're going to have a little bit of a surprise when they find out there's a 27-year-old English man here as well. <laughs> Games in the DR. So see, so see, My, my, hui, hui, so see, moi, hui. What does that mean? What does that mean? In English, suck my G. <laughs> we were in the People's Republic of Donetsk, stuck at a house party during military curfew, drinking litre bottles of beer and riding BMXs indoors. Sorry, uh, it, uh, a little uh, Russian lesson has been interrupted for a second. This looks moody. This is sort of, um, sort of Donbass horrorcore, I guess. <laughs> So, it's quite a long time past curfew now and no sign of police and the party's still going on. There's a bunch of guys sort of jumping off a mantelpiece onto a BMX, there are a couple of sort of Donbass juggalos. I feel like I'm in a sort of weird Soviet remix of kids for all these, you know, sort of shirtless skater kids. And uh, this guy even looks a bit like Chloe Savini. You know, the whole city's dead at 11 and here they are doing this, you know. It's a testament to the sort of ingenious ambitions and talent that kids have of getting pissed. Okay, so apparently at these parties, this is the thing to say. Kato Ebenosa. Yes! 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 It was past curfew and everyone here was now locked into the party. But I had an official engagement to attend to. So I left to join a ride along with two local police officers on a mission to catch any errant streetwalkers. Obviously, the curfew is pretty much the defining story of any young person in this city. So it'd be interesting to see the other side of it and find out who's actually here, you know, making it happen, who's here enforcing it, and why they're doing it.
Nej. Kom. How has your job changed since the curfew came into effect? Работа изменилась в корне, потому что все те требования и каноны, которые были украинской милиции, все переигралось. Во-первых, война очень людей сильно изменила. И люди стали как-то больше дружнее, сплоченнее, и меньше стали нарушать. И больше стало работы. So do you think the curfew is a good thing for the city of Donetsk? Сам комендантский час это мера необходима для того, чтобы не было как бы незаконно пересечения и шпионских действий. Люди все равно нарушают, допустим, как эти молодые люди. Тормозни. Сейчас как раз. Нормально. А время сколько, ребят? Не знаю. Мы сегодня в работе чуть больше содержали, чем комендант. Ну, извиняюсь, но за нас как получается. Какие документы эти положаемых людей? У нас военное время. Должен человек носить с собой паспорт. Ну, байк должен быть, что? Должен быть, но почему вы не дома? Ну, давай раньше рассчитывать. Ну, на трамвай то, что рассчитываем. Поехали в радио, будет там ночевать. Так, ну зачем? А потому что вы нарушаете комендантский час. Поехали. Ребят, давайте без перерекания. Без перерекания. Ну давайте, ну что, загружаемся. Нет, я вас не прошу, я вас вытащил на улицу. С вами не поехали. So, everyone's sort of been ushered away. It's quite confusing, but they seem genuinely quite Tugged by it all. They look scared. Guys, do not bang the doors. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. So, um, the guys we just picked up have been taken to the police headquarters where they'll be apparently spending the night in the cells. It's a similar situation that a lot of us have been in. We've all missed the last bus or train, but um, these guys are now spending the night in the cells for it. Do you know of any ways in which people are getting round the curfew? There's a lot of Russian words. The word is not the one who took it. Поэтому ну, получилось у человека, дай бог. Ну, сегодня получилось, завтра получилось. Когда-то не получится. Ударите камеру. So we left the house party to come and do this police interview because we thought we might get a nice little contrast between what these guys are up to enforcing the curfew and what you know everyone else is up to sort of trying to get round it. But <laughs> in the time that we've been out, apparently the police have turned up at the house party and everyone has been nicked, including the crew. So I've had a sort of lucky escape, it seems. The police were apparently alerted to the party because of a noise complaint from a neighbor. But after a few hours and a lot of negotiation, both the Pills crew and our crew were released. The fact that we had official accreditation might have helped. I wondered how long they would have stayed had we not been there. Where are you? Uh, but this very, very, very crazy, very crazy boom. Uh, this is, this is not cool. This is, uh... <laughs> Кто ебанулся? Мы ебанулись. Вот мы ебанулись, ребята. Все в дом, все в дом. Все в дом, все в дом. Короче, пришли люди с автоматами. Они передернули затвор, сказали, что мы строились ну просто вот так вот ширинку просто, да? Вот просто я не понимаю просто таких людей, но они просто меня вымражают, но я не понимаю просто. Они сказали, что мы устроили ширинку просто, но мы, нас тут человек 20 просто, они сказали, ну стройте ширинку, да? Они начали качать права просто, ну это, типа это мы капец, нарушаем. да, типа мы нарушаем закон, но на самом деле просто комендантский час, ну это ничто, это, ну мы не преступники никакие, ничего, ну мы ничего не нарушали. Вы должны быть с людьми и полицейскими, которые примерно similar ages to you guys. 
what what is it that makes you know one person go one way and another go the other way? Все это время кому-то нужны деньги, кому-то может даже какая-то мини слава, знаете, ну каждый хочет походить по форме, рассказать какой ты крутой, а кто-то ну кто-то это все понимает и сидит дома и лучше продолжает делать то, что ему нравится, чем чисто показать какой ты. Начали выпускать даже во время войны свою одежду, свою линию там одежды. Мы не смотрим на войну, на Украину, там на политические взгляды. Мы просто вот выпускаем пилс. Пилс. Пилс, да. Выпускаем ну, одежду тут. Надежное движение у нас в Донецке во время военных действий все равно продолжает что-то делать новое. И вот все оно выходит у нас. We have a very, very cool brand. <laughs> this is the hottest brand in the whole of the DPR. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Thank you. I couldn't help but wonder, with this nightmare going on, why didn't these teens just leave? It wasn't easy. But it wasn't impossible either. And what would keep anyone here? I mean, do you even want to live here anymore? Because it seems like you know you're a young, cool guy with a good head of hair. You could you could go anywhere. Like, what keeps you in Donetsk? Да, Донецк это мой город. Почему я должен с ним уезжать? Мне здесь нравится. Здесь полная тусовка. Здесь мои друзья, кенты, там все, все, кто можно. Я со всеми общаюсь. Несмотря на никакие вообще проблемы, вот я остаюсь здесь, потому что это мое. Это вот тут вот. Are you scared about speaking out about the regime and the politics here? Ты боишься? Слишком, слишком большая проблема говорить открыто. Говорить открыто боятся все. Потому что все напуганы, все вот эти обстрелы, это что-то такое, какие-то приемы, там, допустим, какие-то задержания. Вот, все боятся говорить. Вот. Но мне как бы все равно, в принципе, я, допустим, могу говорить об этом, что это большая проблема. Вот. И я хочу, очень-очень-очень хочу мира во всем Донбассе, чтобы не было обстрелов, не было чего, чтобы Донбас жил мирно. Донбас free. Серьезно, очень-очень надоело. Это очень-очень плохо, вот, все вот эти аресты, все это, это очень надоедает. Почему мы не можем жить свободной жизнью в free life? No war, no war. Peace. Peace yeah. in this life. So it's 3 a.m. now, about two hours before curfew ends and everyone here can go home. Probably the real tragedy of this whole situation is that a lot of people did leave this city. There was, you know, the brain drain. A lot of people went to Kiev and abroad and, you know, worked their way into this sort of continental understanding new Europe. But these are the kids who stayed behind and through loyalty and just the love of their city, which, you know, they really, really believe in. They wouldn't be here otherwise. And what are they getting in return but a fucking kick in the teeth? Now, this is a, a regime that talks about loyalty and patriotism and nationalism all the time. And here you have probably the very few young people who are actually exhibiting some of that, and you're turning up to their house parties with automatic weapons. It is absurd and it's disgusting, and I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm lost for words. It's, it's really, really fucked up. You are very cool guys. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, mate. Good for the thing. Yeah. All right, guys. See you later. Thank you for everything. I had a, I had a wicked night. Cheers. Enjoy, uh, enjoy the rest of your morning. See you later.